Hello everyone, I am Praveen and we are discussing the chapter of Ansible. In the last class, we had a brief introduction of how Ansible works and how uh, it's going to be differentiated between other configuration and the management tools and why we are using Ansible in a um, traditional infrastructure environment and also in a cloud infrastructure environment. In this session, we are going to start uh, setting up Ansible and how are we going to use Ansible in a cloud infrastructure environment using AWS. So let's start discussing of Ansible and let's start configuring Ansible um, in an AWS environment. We can eventually replace AWS environment with a normal trad traditional infrastructure environment as well. But um, since uh, there's a cloud hub which is happening these days, so it's always good to start working on the cloud environment. So let's start. Um, before we start on to start working on Ansible, these are the essential packages required. As listed in the slides, the first one is we are going to use Amazon AWS servers. We are going to launch three to four nodes which are of T1.micro configuration. T1.micro is a free and we are going to use RHEL or CentOS version 7 which, are, which we were going to deploy Ansible on top of it and we are going to download Ansible package from it and uh, we are going to use multi-tab putty. So uh, these are the main and the important packages which are required for uh, working on Ansible and we are going to do on step by step. So before we proceed further, before we proceed uh, further, so let's start deploying an AWS cloud having a three to four EC2 servers. So let's start deploying three to four EC2 engines and uh, we're going to use those in our Ansible course. Once we deploy, we, we are going to set up an SSH key, um, a keyless authentication and facilitate during the communication of the whole course. So let's start AWS Management Console. If you guys are not uh, aware of AWS, please make sure to read through AWS courses via Eureka. So let's go uh, with AWS Management Console, which I have the account set up already. Let's stick with a uh, management console and uh, I'm just logging into a uh, console as of now. Uh, this is the requirement we are uh, doing now. So we are setting up an AWS cloud having three EC2 servers or four, E2, four EC2 servers and we're going to deploy Ansible on top of them and uh, uh, make sure that we exchange keys to facilitate during the communications course. So I have account and I'm going to log into that account to make sure that I have a free tire given by AWS um, yeah so this is a region you can select any of the regions you want to start on with the services of AWS so I'm going to select Asia Pacific Mumbai location so I'm going to go to EC2 virtual service in the cloud and start creating three virtual machines and that virtual machines are going to use in our daily um, Ansible course and uh, we are going to see how Ansible is going to function for those three machines so I'm going to launch an instance. Um, we require three instances. So we're going to use Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.2 um, because that's a free tire eligible machine and that's easy for us to um, set up Ansible and continue further. So we're going to go select the machine. We're going to go um, select t2.micro. I specify t1.micro in the slide, but um, that is in an uh, older modules where AWS give us free. These days we are getting t2.micro, you know, uh, machines, which is having one vCPU, one GB RAM and uh, um, instant storage. Yeah, yes. So let's start as, as, was, as I was discussing earlier, uh, we are going to set up an AWS cloud having a three EC2 servers. We are going to deploy three servers in an uh, uh, AWS engine and we are going to use Ansible course for that. Once we deploy the Ansible um, software, we are going to create and use exchange the SSH keys and facilitate the communication during our course. So first and foremost, we need to have an Amazon cloud engine and um, the Amazon cloud engine is uh, already been open. I'm going to do it from first again. I'm going to sign out. Make sure you have the AWS engine set up. Uh, from your end create the account which is free of cost for one year Amazon is going to give AWS is free of cost for almost a year and start utilizing its services 
the moment you log into AWS management console the first thing which we need to notice is like which location are we using to launch the three machines we have almost eight plus regions one is at us east west us west couple of regions two regions in europe and almost like five five regions in asia pacific and one region in south america you can select any of the regions you want and use the services of aws i'm going to select asia pacific now as i discussed some time back and uh, i'm going to launch three virtual servers in the cloud so click on ec2 ec2 here refers to elastic compute cloud compute cloud is uh, something uh, um, which is actually a node in amazon web services so um, this is a dashboard of ec2 where we can see there are no running instances and there is no dedicated host launched we don't have any volumes we don't have any key pairs we don't have any placement groups elastic ips snapshots or anything configured so we're going to use this aws in mumbai location for launching three virtual machines you can see the service health of the data center in asia pacific which is operating normally and availability zone is having ap south one is always available available one south one b is always available usually these two availability regions are in the form of cluster so if one availability region goes down the other availability region is going to assist in case of disaster recovery so as discussed in ansible requirements um, let me start an instance and let me launch an instance and uh, we're going to use red hat 7 we can use amazon linux virtual machine but uh, um, since it has only limited privileges we can use red hat which is easily uh, acceptable and we can download a lot of packages for red hat we can also use SUSE, Ubuntu, any kind of infrastructure operating system. But uh, let's stick on with Red Hat, and uh, which is a free tier eligible, which is a general purpose utilization um, machine. This has a root device type EBS. It has a virtualization type of HVM. HVM is a hypervisor which Amazon uses at the backend. And if you want to use OpenStack, then uh, the virtualization type will be KVM. If you are using a Citrix, then the virtualization type will be XVM. Remember, this Red Hat machine is a 64-bit machine. And uh, I'm going to launch three machines using this image. The moment I type um, launching a machine, I can eventually choose what generation. I can choose all generations or I can choose current generation. Let me choose a recent generation and uh, you can see which uh, which is the stuff I currently selected. It's T2 Micro, which is having a variable ECUs. It is having one vCPU. It is having 2.5 gigahertz of frequency. And the machine will be launched on Intel Xeon family. And uh, it has one GB of RAM and elastic block storage only. The network performance will be no low to moderate. And, uh, and it's a normal network performance, which... Uh, um, you know, uh, we usually uh, put it in uh, for launching the machine. So let's start and uh, configure the instance. So here we have an option called number of instances. As discussed in the slide, we are going to set up three or four EC2 machines. So let's deploy four servers so it'll be easy for us to differentiate and start working on Ansible and uh, check out how Ansible functions for this. So I'm going to use four machines and uh, I'll use a default network which gives us by Amazon. I'm going to use default subnet which gives by Amazon because I'm not launching any kind of virtual private cloud in Amazon. I'm going to use Amazon network to test the functionality of Ansible and launch four machines. Um, auto assign of public IP. Yes, I can assign a public IP automatically. That we are going to show it later once the machines are launched so we are not bothered about iam roles as of now we are not bothered about shutdown behavior we will not work on protect against accidental termination because this course requires only four virtual machines and um, that will be testing purpose itself so this is not into production so we can better not to take this and we do, we do not require any kind of monitoring uh, enabled for these four machines so because it requires additional charges and uh, we will we are using it for testing purpose so we are not going to enable this as well we can use um, 
tenancy if you want to use a dedicated host so what does dedicated means these four machines will be given a dedicated hardware to run our ansible so this is a kind of uh, requirement where a corporate environment needs but for this course we does not require a dedicated or an dedicated instance so let's stick with a shared instance so the shared instance will be run on any availability zones as i discussed uh, in the last uh, uh, tab where we are having availability regions in uh, mumbai south a and the mumbai south b if i am putting dedicated it is going to put me one location with a dedicated hardware but if i am putting shared it is going to put me on both the locations wherever the available resources and it is going to put in the number of four instances fluctuating between these regions we have something called advanced settings um in advanced settings you can just put in your script which is going to prompt when the machine comes up so maybe like a date and uh, or any kind of scripts which you want to run during a starting of the machine of the engine so as of now we are not bothered about that so we are not going to put any kind of uh, scripts at that once details next once we are clarified what we are going to launch so we want four machines one network one subnet by default by amazon and auto assign of what i public ip we are going to do that later so let let it be a default use subnetting enable we are not bothered about iam as of now we are not bothered about shutdown behavior and uh, let's go for the next step called add storage all the four virtual machines will be having a 10 gig of storage and uh, it should be having a device dev sda1 and which will be having a root volume type called root by default all the four virtual machines will be having a snapshot created and uh, we can select uh, any kind three kinds of storage device one is magnetic magnetic has a lot of hardware components and it's very slow in nature we can select general purpose ssd which is a solid state drive uh, it's very fast the instance is going to respond to us very fastly and we are going to select that by default we can actually use provisioned iops so for this kind of uh, storage type where you require a performance of high end input and output we can select provision iops but as of now we don't want provision iops we're going to stick on with general purpose ssd in general purpose ssd we have seen that the baseline is 100 input output per second for 1 gb data transaction but if you go with iops provision iops you can see there is 300 data transmission of input output per 1 gb so we are not bothered about a performance as of now because we are just launching four machines and not a, you know a huge infrastructure so let's stick with general purpose ssd and not to stick with magnetic because magnetic involves a lot of hardware components and the performance will be degraded for the machine if you want any extra storage on all the four machines just add a new volume just put on the ebs ebs is an elastic block storage you can put on the device name whichever you want and um you can select any snapshot but as of now we require not snapshot and you can select the size maybe like 20 gb or 5 gb and uh, select the storage type you want and you can see apart from the root device the storage type volume type is going to change differentiately we can see the throughput optimized hdd added cold hdd added so these are the extra two options given by amazon if you want to use elastic block storage so we are not concerned about this now so we want only four machines with 10 gb gig as a root device um we can get eligible device up to 30 gig if it's like more than 30 gig it is going to charge us for chargeable for us so let's stick with 30 gig which amazon provides as a free charge so let's tag the instance so we can tag the instance like nodes and configure a security group let's create a security group um that security group will be like my my secure group my secure this security group will be having rules which is set up one is ssh by default i can ssh to any machines using port 22 i can use um icmp if i want to ping any kind of machines from anywhere if i want to use um http port 80 then if I want to use HTTPS, then we can select that as well. So once it's selected, let's go review and launch. So this tab is to review about whatever configuration settings we have did so far. 
So one is a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.2 as discussed, which is having an SSD volume type and Amazon Cloud. Um, another one is a T2 of dot micro instance type, which is variable ECUs, one CPU, one GB RAM, EBS storage, low to moderate network performance. The third tab is a security group. We can see what are the rules which we have added in security group is like we have SSH by default, which is using the port 22 to connect to all the machines. We are having all ICMP. Um, we are having HTTP and HTTPS protocols as well. We're going to see instance details. We require four instances to test our Ansible uh, software on it and to work on an lab machine, which is, you know, we have installed it on a particular default network given by Ans uh, Amazon and uh, we are not preference any subnet as of now. These are the rules which we give some time back in an, uh, launching a machine. We are using a storage of 10 Sorry, we should give 30. We should give 10. Um, I did a back. Okay, let me do it from first. So we are launching four machine and uh, we are launching a shared instance. Going to add storage. We need to give 10 gig because uh, 30 gig is a huge uh, storage and it's not required for us as of now. Next tagging instance, we are going to give nodes, configure a security group, and uh, we are going to create a security group called my secure group and we are going to add roles um, the roles are http the roles are icmp for pinging purposes to check the ping happening perfectly or not and uh, we're going to select source from anywhere instead of you can give a predefined uh, custom ip but uh, let's take anywhere in order to avoid problems in future and let's select https protocol as well in kind of uh, apache web server if you want to use https then it's good so we are select we, we are reviewing this and uh, we came to know that the size is 10 gb as of now a tag we are given uh, nodes so let's launch four machines now the important thing is choosing a key pair let's create a new key pair and let me give the key pair name so my nodes is the key pair name i'm going to download the key pair and uh, it's going to download in my home directory let's launch the instances so we'll see the launch log and see um, is the launch you know launching machine is completed. Let's go click on this, Let's check out the instances. So I can see only one machine is getting launched. We require four machines, isn't it? Let me see. If it's going launching four machines, or else we need to launch three more machines. I think number of nodes I gave only one, one instance. Okay. So let me launch another inst another three more instances because I forgot to give four. Here one was there. I need to give three, and uh, it have ten GB storage. Configure nodes, tag nodes. Next, configure security group. We already have a security group, so this one is a security group. We can see the protocols added for that. We're gonna select the same launch. Then uh, um, we're gonna review it properly. Make sure that we are having three machines, and launch. We're gonna use the same key pair. So I select choose the existing key pair. I acknowledge launch the instance. So view launch log. Yeah, launch instance is complete. I'm gonna go select C. Three machines are launching, getting launched in AP South 1A 1A. Availability zone. You can see the first machine was launched in 1B. The other three machines are launched in 1A. This shows the shared tendency between those machines. So we have deployed three servers or four servers that will be used in our ansible course once deployed we we are going to create and exchange the user and deploy the ssh keys to facilitate communication during our course so once the machines are launched we are going to use those machines create a user deploy the ssh keys connection between them so let's see um, the machines are getting launched and uh, you can see here the status checks is still initializing it should show two cross two to make sure that everything is running fine i'm going to change the name of the nodes one will be master that's ansible master node and uh, the other one will be um, node one node two node three this is to benefit our ansible course and it's gonna um, helpful the way we understand things the way ansible checks out things and it's it's very much useful so let the status checks be uh, two cross two by that time let's um, assign an uh, elastic ip for these machines um, we can see here public ip is already assigned which we can connect this uh, ip externally from internet but we can see elastic ips here not assigned 
the major difference between the public IP and the elastic IPs is that the public IP is dynamic in nature. The moment we reboot node 3, the public IP will be changed when the when the reboot has been completed and the new machine is launched. So every reboot, every shutdown and startup of the machine, the public IPs are going to change for node 3, even for node 2, even for node 1 and even for master. In order to fix the public IPs, in order to make sure that the public IPs are consistent and static. So we need to assign an elastic IP. How do we assign an elastic IP? So understand here, so the only thing we are not going to stick on with uh, public IP is that every reboot or every shutdown and start of the nodes which we are having in Amazon, the public IPs are going to change. We don't want the public IPs to change every now and then when the machine is rebooted. So we are going to stick a new concept called Elastic IP. So as it explains here, the Elastic IP addresses are associated with the instance and once we have an Elastic IP associated to the instance, irrespective of number of reboots irrespective of number of machines which are going to get it down or which are going to get it back up the ips of public is not going to change how do we assign an elastic ip it's very simple we can see if you just go uh, left and uh, see the network security tab you can see there's a new concept called elastic ip click on the elastic ip allocate four addresses yes we need to allocate four ip addresses allocate another one allocate another one so the reason why we are doing this because the public IP is going to change for every frequent reboots of the machine we don't want that to change so we're going to assign an elastic IP address for those engines or for those nodes or the instances so that the IPs are going to fix and it's going to benefit us for in our Ansible course because we don't want the IPs change frequently happen so let's use this IP and associate with the machines which we are having or the instances which we are having let's associate with master and we're going to tick on reassociation. If you're not using this reassociation tab, then we are going to create elastic IPs newly every time. So let's tick with new reassociation and we're going to click associate. Now we can see that one elastic IP is associated to one instance which is having a private IP address. So if I just go to instances under instances tab and click on master, master, you can see public IP and elastic IP has the same IP even if I reboot the master IP now the public IP will be same and static it is not going to change but in case of node 1 it is going to change because we haven't allocated an elastic IP as of now so let's go to elastic IP tab under network and security click on the other uh, IP elastic IP remaining IP associate the address associate the address uh, to a node 1 now associate it Use the same thing and associate to other nodes. Associate address to node 2. Associate the address to node 3 as well. Now we are used elastic IP for each and every nodes which we are or instances which we are running and each instances will have an internal private IP address and external public IP address which we are going to use in our environment. So let's go to instances. Check whether the reflection has been taken place. The master node, you can see the reflection has happened. Elastic IP and public IP is same. The same thing with node node one. It's having the IP elastic IP. It's having the public and elastic IP. It's having the elastic and the public IP, which is same. And each node will have a public IP address, which we are going to connect it externally from internet, and it will have an internal private address, which we are having connecting internally. So this is an internal private IP which machines will be having and this is the public IP which we can connect to the instance externally. So we have deployed three machines and uh, we create, we need to now create and exchange the user and SSH keys to have the facilitate and communication. So how do we do that? We have just created the machines. We have make sure that the IPs are constant and it's not going to fluctuate when we reboot happens. Now we're going to make sure that each machine each instance like master node 1 node 2 node 3 are going to communicate each other and it's, it's it should have a proper inter process communications happening whether it's externally or whether it's internally so let's go with the master server remember this is the ansible master server let's connect it the moment we connect we have a ssh example just copy the example um, we're going to copy this open might putty so this is my putty, this is my base, base machine, this is my uh, base machine and uh, I need to go to the 
key which I saved. So remember the key my notes dot pm which we downloaded some time back here. Um, that is downloaded as a key to launch into this mission. So I need to go into that key. It's into my home directory. So let me grab the key. Yeah, I have the key in my home directory. So this is my notes. This is my key available as of now. We are gonna change the permission chmod four double zero my nodes so once we change the permission um make sure that uh, paste the we are we are connecting to the master server now we are going to connect here copy the example and connect to the master server so we are using ec2 hyphen user to connect and switch to the root you can observe here i have connected using a public ip 52 66 72 51 and internally you can see the ip is 172 31 18 171 this is a private ip this is a public ip private ip is internally to the server and public ip is uh, externally which we can connect to the machine as well so once we have connected to the master the same thing we are going to do with connecting to the node as well so let's open a new tab this is my new tab and uh, um, i'm going to go to my downloads which we are having a key my nodes.pam i'm going to connect the node one use the node one key paste try connecting and we can connect using uh, ec2 hyphen user and switch to root the same process i need to do for node 2 and node 3 i go to node 2 i go to connect and i go to use the same key and uh, i'm going to paste this so i'm going to connect to node 2 switch to root keep it ready make sure that each machine is have external ip and internal ip the next node remaining is uh, node 4 so um, the next node is node 4 or node 3 sorry one is master and node 1 node 2 node 3 use this <coughs> sorry use this and connect using a new tab let it connect and uh, yeah we are into three servers clear it off we are into master server so i'm gonna mark this as master 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 node one node two node three so we have given the names at the top and uh, for each machines what are we going to try to do now is uh, we are going to create a user called test user at test change pa put the password uh, arbitrary password I'm going test here and clear it off and even node one add the user test this is to facilitate uh, for us to communicate properly and to use ansible properly even in node 2 you can use user add test password test this node 3 test password test 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 okay we have created the accounts and uh, um once we have created the account what we are going to do now is uh, we need to make sure the password authentication and the permit root login is enabled for root before we switch to a uh, test user so we need to go to cd etc cd sshd scd ssh in master server and uh, we're gonna edit sshd underscore config edit it then we have password authentication search the password authentication pass word authentication yeah we have this password authentication enable it and enable permit root login so that we do not require any key uh, and you know my notes dot pm key always to connect to this and uh, amazon machines the same thing you need to do it in other machines so vi etc etc sshd ssh d underscore config sorry the file is different cd etc cd sshd sorry ssh sorry and we're going to use ssh d underscore config and do the same thing as we did in master server remove the authentication permit root login as well follow it carefully because this is what is required to set up ansible at the first time the same thing has been done here etc etc sorry it's etc it's not vi cd etc cd ssh it's ssh vi sshd underscore config password 
and permit root login yes i'm gonna search permit root login and saved it and we're gonna use uh, sshd hyphen underscore config and uh, use a password authentication yes yes and uh, same thing here with the permit root login permit yeah yes we got this save the moment we did that you can now check i am just going to um, log out from master and try to connect using test it, without a my node dot pem key remember the last time when i connected i used something called hyphen i my nodes dot pem since we did all those steps as of now we don't want to use my nodes dot pem which is given by amazon to connect the, to these machines so i can just use iphone test at my public ip or the public dns the other thing which i missed is i need to refresh the services before i try this let me try it back and uh, system ctl restart sshd this is required to make sure that i i must not use this my notes or pm key for the every time which i log in so restart in all the machines okay it's done so once i restart just log out and uh, try to log in without my notes or pm so ssh test at I can use this public DNS whole DNS name or I can go to my Amazon instance here go to master I can copy the IP public IP or elastic IP which is same I am going to paste it and I can use the same way with same password it is going to log in into test account so same thing can be done here just log out okay so where we are where we were is like um, we try to connect to the machine um, without using my notes.pem which is given by ansible all the time because uh, that's a kind of drawback which we want to you know um, remove when we connect to that machine so i'm just did some changes at the backend in sshd underscore config file so that um, it, it should not ask um, the key every time which i log in so this time uh, you can see that every time i can just directly log in without any kind of uh, hyphen i stuff which i did uh, earlier using i'm just logging in via test i don't excuse i don't use my notes.pem hyphen i option so i just use uh, excuse uh, test at the fully qualified domain name and put in the password which i created so it's going to log into that machine yeah so i can log into every machine using the test account but whether this is sufficient for me to connect to other machines from master to the nodes node 1 node 2 and node 3 this is not sufficient so we need to generate the key and share the key across all the nodes and make sure its communication is happening good without asking for the password as of now you can just see if i use test at the ip of this machine which is 172.31.18.172 paste it it is going to ask me secure key and it's going to ask me password which i don't want this to happen because ansible works on ssh keyless authentication it should not ask password every time when i log into other machine from master so this is the master machine and this are the other three other nodes and it should have an inter-process ssh communication without asking the password so how does uh, this happen we need to share the key and copy the keys across all the three machines uh, individually before that um, let's give some root privileges for test user because when i use a sudo hyphen root it does not give me a root privilege so this is insane this is not good so what we're going to do is uh, log out on the machine and connect using um, ec2 machine ec2 user and uh, give the test user root privileges so you can just vi etc sudo urs and go to the bottom and type test all equal to all it should not ask password if i want to switch to root so copy this line so it can be we need to put this same line on every other machine log out connect it back using ec2 user because ec2 user is having a sudo to root privilege where test user does not have we are giving sudo to root privileges for test user okay save it 
and uh, do the same thing here as well um, viitc sudo ers and uh, and just paste it here yes i'm doing the same thing a little bit fast because uh, we can just uh, uh, grab the same information on all the other nodes so it's already in root we are just going to vi sudo ers and just go and type and paste it yeah now you can see that when i log on into a test user in a master i can switch to root and the same i'm, I'm in root now the same functionality appears for all the machines now we are going to work only on test user accounts we are not going to bother about roots so let's switch to test in all the machines switch to test so this is what is required and this is what is required to have a efficient connectivity between connectivity between the machines um yeah switch to test the most important thing which i want to note down is like um i need to note down master servers credential i public ip and the private ip so uh, i have a notepad which um gonna give me master server this is a configuration part so public um so public ip is something which we can get it in uh, aws console so just copy the public ip even we can get the private ip as well public paste it private you can get it from here so this is the private ip paste it so node one public private node two public private node three public private so once we get, we are finalized with that let's copy the same stuff now so node one public is this one copy node one public node one um, private will be this from aws console node two public is copy the node to public ip address private ip address as well the same is applicable for node 3 just copy and uh, save it because it is required for us when we try running ansible playbooks ansible roles or ansible hosts um, which is going to benefit uh, for us in ecd rather than just you know um, grabbing it from if config every time remember one thing we can actually replace this private ips from domain private ips from uh, host names or host name or domain names so but let's fix with ips because it's easy for us to identify and uh, this can be public ips can be replaced with fully qualified domain names which is here uh, from uh, the aws console just you can just copy the public dns and uh, paste it we can use this and that so whichever is fine is good so let's have uh, stick with this and let's go to the uh, prompt we need to make sure it does not uh, ask for password um, and it should have an SSH protocol enabled passwordless SSH authentication enabled between all the machines irrespective of um, the key. You know, it should be having a keyless authentication. So if I just type test at my another node to private node. Remember, since we are working internally, so we need to use private networks. If you are working externally from internet, want to connect to the node, then we can use public network. Since we are working internally, that means I am using my internal IP to connect to the other machine, which is internal in nature. So with something um, which is uh, uh, doing internally from machine to machine at the back end. But if you want to connect to the machine from internet, global internet to the machine, then we can use public IPs using test at 5266. 7188 test at but here as well we can do it internally i need to make sure it should have communication internally done to have ansible one run safe and good and uh, you know get proper appropriate results because it uses ssh protocol so i copy the node one private ip paste it here it asks for the password it should have it shouldn't ask for the password so we need to generate a key and share it across various machines even the same thing up 
it asks for the password for node 2 as well just copy this and try from master to connect to the node 2 oops it is having a double colon and try yes and uh, it asks for the password it shouldn't ask for the password so we need to have a keyless based keyless based authentication from master to node 1 node 2 node 3 from node 1 to master node 2 and node 3 from node 2 to master node 1 and node 3 from node 3 to master node 1 and node 2 so for that uh, we need to switch to test user and check whether i am in test yes i am a test user check the present working directory yes i have the present working directory ssh hyphen key gen it is going to generate the key and that key can be used as a passwordless authentication key so generate the same thing in all the machines ssh hyphen key gen generate the key and save it in the home directory ssh hyphen key gen yep yeah. ssh hyphen key gen remember these are the machines which are being launched in amazon cloud if you want to just check whether it's launched in amazon cloud just type your name hyphen a you can see it's launched in ap dot south one in mumbai region and we are using these machines as our uh, you know templates or machines which we can test our ansible um, technology and orchestration tool the first one first tab is a master tab and uh, it has having an ip of 172 once now we have generated the key we need to make sure the keys are shared across the other machines to have a keyless based authentication or the passwordless authentication how can we do that um, we can just use ssh hyphen copy hyphen id command and give the ips of other machines it's going to copy the key and paste it in the other machine it's going to ask password for the first time and uh, we can just try to ssh now with that particular I ip um, test at this now it's not asking for the password earlier it used to ask for the password the same thing i need to do on all the machines just keep on following so i'm going to take another private ip of node 2 and type ssh hyphen copy hyphen id and paste it first time it's going to ask for password just put the password and do the same thing for node 3 as well copy it ssh hyphen key hyphen gen so, sorry uh, it's ssh hyphen copy hyphen id paste it and uh, it's going to ask password for the first time just paste it now you can just connect to all the other nodes without any password and this is a critical part in ansible because ansible works ssh and requires passwordless authentication i'm going to do the same thing here in the other machine so ssh hyphen copy hyphen id and copy the master private oops it's not selecting properly so i'm going to select it properly copy it and paste it it's going to ask password for the first time remember everything we are doing with the test user so the node one is we are already in node one we are not going to do that for same thing copy the node two ssh hyphen copy hyphen id and paste it see whether it's asking for the password yes it's not asking for the password logout and cop do the same thing for node three as well copy hyphen id paste it Ask for the password done so now second node uh, node number one is done we're going to go with node number two ssh hyphen copy hyphen id at this machine which is um oops we need to just remove that add yes this is critical part once the environment is set properly we can make sure that everything will be run smooth from ansible in order to avoid hitches at the later stages okay then we are going to do with master test okay so we are we are done with node 2 now so we're going to go with node 3 and do the same thing so we have already copied master's key the hyphen copy hyphen id um paste the ip so let's take test i'm going to use a node 1 now ssh hyphen copy hyphen id i know uh, it's going to work passwordless so i'm not testing in each and every nodes just put in the password perfect i'm going to use node 2 now to make sure that each node can connect to each other node without any password 
okay done so we are done and each node can connect to each other node without any password using test user account simple thing just let, let me do a random check your test at kuna master take master from node one node one node two so from node two to master it does not ask password i'm easily into node two with test account perfect now we have completed this step of uh, deploying three to four virtual machines termed as elastic cloud compute machines that will be used to deploy ansible and that will be used to learn ansible from our end and create the exchange user of you exchange of the users and ssh keys to facilitate the communication during the course once we have done with setting setting up of ansible cloud the next topic is um we need to download and install ansible so before that let's stick on with the requirements so we have used amazon aws servers we are used three to four nodes of t1.micro configuration sorry it's t2.micro because t1.micro is uh, from older amazon services which they used to give free nowadays they are giving t2.micro as free then we have used red hat 7 uh, in our virtual machines you can just confirm that here in machines here you name hyphen a cat etc release okay cat etc red hat release yeah it's red hat enterprise linux server 7.2 and the same thing has been done here cat etc red hat release cat etc red hat release so the same machine has been deployed and each machine is a uh, uh, communication each other without any password sss test at maybe i can just take a sample example again to make sure that it's again still working properly i can just take node 3 machine copy it and paste it and paste it yes um i think it's gonna ask for password it should not ask for password yeah this is what uh, we need to fix it um this is a test ah i'm connecting to the same machine with the same uh ip that's the reason so we need to connect to different machine so i will use 170 because i use the same machine to connect to the same uh, server so that's bad so i can use the sorry i will use my node one or node one i can see test ssh test at paste yeah it's asking it's not asking for password Okay, so I can just try with other machine. Try with other machine. Yes, it's perfectly working fine. So, need not worry if you're trying to connect uh, the same account with the same machine. It's gonna ask for a password. It's actually not required because we are using communication from master to node one, node two, node three, node one to master, node two and node three, node two to master, node one and node three, node three to rest all the machines. So. This is what we have done and we have a pro, you know implemented an uh, ssh connectivity between those machines which is not going to ask password and this setup is required to install an ansible and configure the ansible at the first phase so we are done with part one installation of aws services and making sure that they are connecting with without a password and it's going to communicate interprocessly for all the machines or all the nodes from master to nodes which we have created Thank you for attending this class. So then in the next class, we are going to discuss how to install Ansible on all the other nodes and how the Ansible functionality is going to take care. Thank you for the class. Welcome back to the course of Ansible. Till now, we have discussed about deployment of AWS servers and to deploy um, three to four virtual machines. We deployed three to four virtual machines. Okay. So we deployed three to four virtual machines in an AWS cloud where uh, we can see we have named them as a master and we have named the client as node one, node two, node three. We have tested the interconnectivity between these three machines using test account and we have already verified that yes, it's not going to ask password irrespective of what uh, you know connectivity we use between these machines so we can see that it's not going to ask password and it's having interconnectivity using ssh protocol of all the machines from master to node 1 node 2 node 3 from node 1 to master node 2 node 3 and vice versa so now this lecture is going to 
start with deploying and installation of ansible and how we are going to use ansible to deploy on all those three machines um on all on, on as well master node so uh, before deploying let's go stick on with the ansible website which showcase different products available from ansible so ansible releases two products one is ansible tower ansible tower comes with a graphical user interface as seen in the website and it's not free of cost it has uh, a chargeable and it's pricing has been based on the number of nodes just click on ansible tower pricing we can see <coughs> The, the pricing of ansible is between the based on number of nodes you if you are, want to use ansible for 100 nodes it's a dollar 5000 per year if you want to use ansible for um 250 nodes or more than 100 nodes depending on the support and uh, the premium so ansible tower has been you know commercially uh, sold across the commercial companies but we can use ansible as a uh, open source product which is available free of cost from fedora website as well so we are going to use Ansible for provisioning. We are going to use Ansible for configuration management in our future le lectures. We are going to use for app deployment, continuous delivery, orchestration, and security compliance. So these are the main things which each configuration management tool are going to get used of. Because of its efficient architecture, Ansible hits an uh, upfront number one position compared to all other tools. It is just SSH and it does not have demons and processes running at the back end. So we are, we are having that virtual machine setup already done by amazon console we tested it with test id now we are going to install ansible before installing ansible on all the nodes we need to make sure that we have appropriate repositories created so i have noted down the repository of ansible which comes from this fedora project we are not going to download it from ansible.com because ansible.com releases only commercial product in order to get the open source product the federal release has been uh, taken place so just we need to go to federal project here get that release and make sure you install the ansible but before that we need to have epel release installed on the machine of all on the machine on all master and node machine so what is epel this epel is extra package repositories for red hat 7 so this red hat 7 acts as a package repository and we make sure we get all kind of packages from that epel if you just type sudo em repo list we can see you know it's not con connecting to the load balancer so um probably we can sudo em repo list um let me see whether we have a repository created or not cd etcm not repos dot d and uh, we can see a red hat repo which is created we are not going to use this red hat repo because um we are going to create another repository where we get all kind of packages so let's start um getting created the repositories but before that we need to install wget let's check we have a wget installed or not we don't have wget installed so we're gonna install wget cds balancer so i think it's having some problem with connecting the load balancer at the back end so what we can do now is okay we, we want to reboot this machine to make sure that it connects to the aws uh, cds balancers um once it's come up then you can use uh, repositories for this so <clears throat> let's see whether it's pingable it's unknown host um ping and we're going to give this yeah showing an host so let me verify again dl.federalproject.org yes it's pingable so we will create a repository for this um using it wget so how do we create a repository um before that let's restart the machine because we are unable to connect to um certain kind of uh, repositories which by default existed so dot repo okay we we're gonna restart instances terminate instances we're gonna reboot each and every instance to make sure that it connects to the repositories because um, it's not able to connect to CDN repositories from Red Hat from load balancer I can just reboot the machines so we this should have a connection connectivity lost yes that's right now every machine is getting connection lost so let's wait the until the machine comes back up 
and uh, we need to create a repository to make sure that we get a pro appropriate ansible packages in picture okay let's take some time welcome back to the introduction of ansible and installation of ansible on various amazon cloud machines i am praveen and i have been i have been working on installing of uh, ansible on amazon ec2 machines so so far we have uh, we have installed 3 to 4 ansible i mean 3 to 4 ec2 cloud virtual machines on an amazon cloud um, we have make we had make sure that all those three to four machines are ssh compatibility and they are not going to ask password using the user accounts test so using test accounts we can log into any each other server from master to all the nodes or from node to all the other nodes and the master as well so ssh connectivity has been tested in my previous class so so for now we are going to start with the download and installation of ansible um for for download and installation of ansible we are going to concentrate on uh, connecting to a fedora project first because the ansible website does not show uh, does not give us a free source tool to download the ansible from the internet in fact the ansible website which is going to show here um is showing the tower um, which is a commercially acclaimed product say, sold by Ansible for various commercial companies. You can see the Ansible can be integrated with various EC2 machines and I'm doing the same as well. We are going to in integrate this Ansible to Amazon Cloud and we're going to test Ansible in this um, network as well. So as I told uh, earlier, we can uh, see uh, how the pricing has been done in Ansible. So we can just go to the products. We can... Uh, uh, check the tower pricing of ansible remember this is a commercial tool and we are not going to use this for our lab environment now we're going to use uh, self-support uh, there are three kinds of categories which ansible gives for the commercial companies one is self-support uh, which can manage up to 100 nodes 250 nodes and 500 premium nodes um, for enterprise companies they give uh, 24 cross 7 uh, phone support and web support for premium members as well so this t commercial tool we're gonna not use it because uh, uh, it's gonna chargeable for us so um, we are gonna download a free ansible tool from fedora project so you can just uh, download ansible fedora project so um, we actually get all the files from the fedora project um, preferably from a link which i have here uh, this is the link rpm package so we are gonna uh, get everything from fedora project for that we need to install an epel epel is something an extra package release for red hat so we're gonna get this wget and we're gonna install the epel release in order to get ansible so what i'm gonna do now is go to each machine um, and install epel as a base package we can just go to etc m.repos.d and you can see the repository is available there is no repository available as of now the epel repository in node 3 what i'm gonna do now is like i'm gonna use wget and get the repository since wget is not installed i'm going to install wget yeah we are first installing wget in a node 3 and uh, um, we are going to pull out the package and create the repository remember now we don't have a epel extra package repository if you configure extra package repository then we by default we can get the ansible package so i'm going to use wget um, and just yeah, now we are getting permission denied because we are in etc repository which is owned by root. So we need to go to our home directory test and use wget. Yes, I got this package, uh, an RPM file. I'm going to install that uh, uh, package. We can just run the command which is shown here rpm hi space hyphen ivh and epl release 7.7.norg rpm. So we're going to paste this and uh, for installation we require sudo privileges. So sudo m rpm hyphen ivh so we install this now you just go to etc m dot repos dot d and you can see the epl repo has been there yeah we can see the repository is configured in node 3 machine but uh, when i just go check another machines i have been done it's a pre-work already i can just go to etc m dot repos dot d i can see epl configured on each and every machine sometime back so as is true as if you are testing in your machine you need to configure epel using the two steps like uh, 
downloading this package wget downloading this wget package um, I'm gonna highlight this downloading the wget package uh, which is rpm file and installing using rpm hi h on all the other machines and we can get configure epl repository here so you can just go to etcm.repos.d and you can see epl has been configured epel.repos.d okay once we have configured with epel repositories uh, we need to update yum so what we need to do is like sudo um since we have in the root i'm going to switch to test um sudo yum update we're going to update each and every machine using yum update sudo yum update each and every machine including master node 1 node 2 and node 3 as i discussed in the previous classes so it's going to update everything and it's going to tell if there are packages marked to update it's going to tell yes there is an update available you can see in this machine there is 118 packages should be updated in node 3 so I'm going to update everything and other machines we are not uh, bothered as of now because they have the packages updated till date. So this machine it's just checking and it's it's going to you know update all the packages before we try to install the Ansible. Let it install. It's going to take a few seconds for installation. Um, once its installation is completed, let's stick on to install Ansible. So once uh, it's installed, um, once we install all the packages in this machine, the next step is to install Ansible. Let node 3 gets installed its packages. We're going to install Ansible on all the other nodes as of now. So the command to install Ansible is sudo yum install Ansible hyphen y. So it's going to force install the Ansible and it's going to check for the dependencies availability. So once the Ansible is installed, just clear it and make sure you install you know, each and every machine. Sudo ansible sorry sudo yum install ansible yum install ansible hyphen y so you need to install in each and every machine um yeah i need to put ansible name sudo yum install ansible hyphen y um yeah for this machine as well sudo yum install ansible hyphen y so once you install the Ansible package, um, it is going to install by default the Python dependabilities. We, we can see the Python dependabilities has been installed. This proves that Ansible uses Python modules uh, to install the packages. Python modules to install the packages. So to verify whether the Ansible is installed or not, we can just type the command Ansible hyphen hyphen version which is going to show us like ansible which is a latest of 2.1.0 has been installed and we have a configuration file in ansible called etc ansible ansible.cfg the same thing we're going to check it in this machine as well once it's completed installation um let it complete in the node one we'll check in node two i hope yeah in node two we have already ansible installed just um use the command ansible ansible hyphen hyphen version so you can see 2.1.0 is installed and uh, in node 3 as well ansible hyphen hyphen version so uh, we're gonna check the installation in each and every machine to make sure that ansible has been installed appropriately and successfully okay the command version is spelling wrong so i'm gonna put version yeah we can see that each and every machine is having 2.1.0.0 installation availability so once we have install the ansible we need to make sure that the configuration file exists on all the machines yes uh, as per the command ansible hyphen hyphen version we can see the configuration file exists on all kind of machines so here we are we are using three machines or four machines of ec2 servers and we have installed the ansible on all the machines and this ansible uh, is having a configuration file in each machine so that is in path etc ansible and we can see that um, configuration file exists in mold.ansible.cfg and if you just go through the configuration file and there's a lot of uh, stuff uh, which shows so one is with inventory which is uh, showing etc ansible host this is the file where we are going to mention all our infrastructure nodes node 1 node 2 node 3 and we are going to group it in terms of uh, yeah in, in terms of uh, the categories this is the libraries where we have 
then we have a remote temp group and we have a local temporary uh, folder it's gonna pull 15 seconds if if there's a command function for ansible it is going to check uh, whether we need to use a root privilege or ask for a pseudo privilege and uh, it's a lot of stuff happening in ansible configuration file and as we progress further in the class uh, we are going to discuss of each and every configuration uh, which is mentioned in this file um, and to demonstrate very well how the ansible is um, going to function good if if you want to turn the logging on to see what is happening at the back end so we can just go to ansible.cfg file go to logging search for logging and uh, uh, if logging is off so we're gonna remove this and uh, we can log each and everything uh, from here since we are uh, we are, I am unable to edit because I'm a test user I'm gonna use sudo vi ansible.cfg then I'm gonna go to log I'm gonna log remove this hash to make sure that what is happening at the back end and we can see the log paths so there we are we are now installed three virtual machines and now we are installed ansible on all the machines and uh, uh, we are going to test the ssh connectivity between, between machines so to check the version ansible hyphen hyphen version uh, we're going to give us the output um, yeah this log file is not writable and we cannot create it so what we can do is we need to make sure this log file is writable so ch mod 777 just give this path okay this rpm i have installed earlier so i'm going to copy that one log mac writable to make sure that it's writable using test directory no such file directory we can uh, create the file for that touch sudo touch yeah so change the permissions now rpm is not then not required we can need to remove this rpm file change the permissions and just type ansible hyphen hyphen version yeah we are going to get this and we are going to get uh, the log file created as well you can just go to this log file just type more on that log file and there's nothing in any you know available as of now because we are not doing anything just we have installed the ansible so that's it for the module number two the module number two consists of two classes one is installation of aws cloud and uh, installing three virtual machines making sure the connectivity between those machines existed without any kind of password we have used user account called test to make sure that connectivity exists between the like in between the machines master and the node machines the next setup one configuration we have installed ansible on all the machines and make sure that it is having appropriate configuration files and turn on logging enabled in the master node thank you